Hello, Gary Crowley here with video four of five videos on symphysis pubis dysfunction, otherwise known as SPD, otherwise known as diastasis symphysis pubis. And again, it means your pubic bone hurts and uh, you want to get rid of that pain. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, video one, we explain generally what we were going to do. Video two, we got into all these big, strong muscles in your hips that could be yanking these hip bones and throwing off your pubic bone. Uh, video three, we release the front of your back and these muscles on the inside of your um, pelvic bones that could be, again, twerking that, that pubic symphysis and making it hurt. And um, here in video four, we're going to release uh, basically uh, your quads, especially one major quad muscle, and um, also your hamstrings, which uh, attach to the bottom of basically this big massive bone, but that, that where they attach it to your ischium is what it's called. But it's still, again, just those big hip bones are, are one big massive bone. Anything could be yanking on them, and if, if that's your pubic bone where my thumbs are, anything pulling them in any which way can make that, that pubic bone hurt. So um, basically the first thing we want to do is release your, your quads, but I do want to show you, um, basically this is your, these are your legs, uh, and um, this one in particular, I just want you to look at, at this muscle right here, which is your, your rectus femoris, and that's a big, strong quad muscle, really powerful, strong muscle, and if you look over here, you'll have to maybe take my word for it, but right there is your rectus femoris attachment. And you can see that, so it's cut out of the picture here, but your rectus femoris comes up and attaches here. So if this big strong muscle, your rectus femoris, was tight, it could be yanking on this big pelvic bone, yanking it right down, and you could almost see if this was yanking it down, it would almost directly be yanking on that pubic bone. So we really want to get at this rectus femoris and then we're also going to check a little around the side here just a little bit to make sure none of this stuff is is affecting things but we're really going to focus on that rectus femoris so um, there's a lot of ways first you can if you want to you can generally you can generally check out how, how tight your your quad is by doing you know one of these things one of these stretches and you know if it's tight you'll generally feel tension in there. And, you know, you don't have to bend way over. You can just do that. And, and the further over you can go um, means generally the less tight you are. Um, but basically, once you determine the tension in there, and if you can get a little stretch in there and release some of it, that's great. But I've just found over the years with big, strong muscle groups like these, these quads, basically what you want to do is you want to get into them with your fingertips um, or your basically your forearm bone out there and what you want to do is I would generally do a little survey first and find where I'm I'm tight and again I'm focusing mainly down kind of the the midline here for that big rectus femoris muscle and any tight spots you find I find generally one you know you find it with your fingertips but when you want to work on it you better take that other hand and do what I call a hand-on-hand -hand technique where you press on your fingertips with this other hand and that generates some good pressure on that muscle and then I just do a press pull release a press pull release a press pull release and this is a, a fairly large area so take your time um, also feel free always feel free on this especially this big muscle here and even these on the side if you have a friend with some thumbs for rent um, you can just tell them, yeah, press right there, they can press right there with their thumbs, and you can do a, a little press hold move, or if, you, if they're good, you say, okay, now just work with that like it's clay a little bit. Press, pull, release, press, pull, release, press, pull, release, press, pull, release, and um, also, as I think you're noticing, your thumbs are also good right here. I, I tend to like my fingertips um, with my hand on hand, but some people... You know, thumbs are strong. You can get in there and actually you get a lot of work done. And like I'm actually a little tight down here, surprisingly. So I can press, pull, release, press, pull, release. And as I do that, it becomes less painful because it lets go. 
And then as I come up here, you might not find much, but you might get all the way up here, there's a spot. And then after you've covered this, I want you to just check, check this maybe outer, outer quadrant, this outer third here. Just make sure there's nothing too glaring here, because sometimes these guys will kind of bunch together and um, wreak a little havoc on that pelvic bone. I'm not too bad here, but again, if you find something tight here, you can either dig on it, hand on hand, you can get your thumbs in there a little bit, or again, if you're uh, most commonly a woman who's recently been pregnant with this uh, SPD, uh, pubic pain, then, um, you yeah, know, put your husband to work. He's, uh, you know, you've earned it. He didn't have to go through labor. Um, but um, anyway, so you do that. Same on the other leg. First survey, uh, thumbs or fingers. Notice where you're tight. Work with it like it's clay. Do a press, pull, press hold move if you want. Uh, personally, with this, I like just doing press pull release. It seems to respond pretty well. And this side's not tight at all. Uh, but then you'll probably notice your dominant leg is probably tighter. So that's your, um, your quad. And then, actually, as a way to assess things, feel free to just stand back up and go, okay, let's see, am I... And again, you don't have to do, you don't have to do this. You can pull onto a chair and do that or whatever. But, um, but you'll notice, uh, they tend to, it's a big area, but it tends to like go reasonably well. Okay, so that's your quads, and again, we basically want to, you know, there's not a lot of tissue up here to release, but by releasing all this, we're going to free that attachment um, and hopefully help your, your pubic bone release. And again, this outer part, your, this is your vastus lateralis, just check that, um, just a little over from the midline, and then you can always, you know, releasing your IT band, um, also helps. That's the big tendon that comes from this tensor fascia lata that we did in the first video. So while you're here, release a little tension there, and sometimes that maybe even will let that let that pelvic bone basically go back the way it wants to go. So rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, tensor fascia lata. Doesn't matter. Just a bunch of gibberish terms. Um, but any tension from here to basically here, just release it and this whole pelvic bone will be able to sit a little better with, um, with your pubic bone. So now we've done the front, we now want to do the back. So uh, we want to do our hamstrings. And our hamstrings are these big muscle groups in the back here. If you feel in your, just below your butt a little bit, you'll feel those sits bones that if you sit on a hard chair that uh, you feel. Well, basically, these hamstrings come up and they attach to the bottom, to that ischium, they call it, down there. So if they're really tight, they can be yanking, they can be yanking on that, um, let me show you this. So they attach down, they attach down here, um, basically. And so if they're tight, they can be basically yanking down, down on that pubic bone and making it hurt. So we just want to make sure those hamstrings are free. Now, the simplest stretch I tend to give, uh, just because it's easy for people to do, is I have you basically drop as far as you can into, into your stretch. And then when you're kind of in a plate, you're relaxed. You know, you're not feeling any massive stretch or anything anywhere. But then you flex your quads as hard as you can and you push into the stretch and you're flexing these as hard as you can to get those hamstrings to help them re relax and you just hold it there for five or ten seconds come out of it take a, a break if you want in a second or two come back down hang you'll probably be hanging a fair bit lower and flex those quads as hard as you can and push into the stretch and what you'll feel ideally you're feeling that stretch all the way up the back side now some people um, see me doing that and they'll say, oh, well, I was told that, that I'm going to hurt my back that way. Well, if you're doing this stretch and you're pushing into it without flexing those quads, you're going to tend to feel it more up here. If you're feeling it up here, you're not doing it right. But once you flex those quads, you're going to feel this all the way up here and your back's fine because there's no, there's no stretch going on in your back. Your stretch is all along here. 
Um, the other way to do this, some people seem to have a little harder time getting this. Same basic concept, basically, as I should have said earlier, weight in the balls of your feet, feet shoulder width apart. You can get a little stool or on, the, on a couch or a chair, and you just put your hands out here, and you, you lean out so your back is nice and arched. Um, and then you, you're going to push that way while you flex your quads. So you push that way, and no one's going to tell you you're going to hurt your back doing this, which is nice. Um, and I'm just basically flexing those quads, and again, I'm feeling it all up here, but I'm also aiming that way, and it's a nice, you'll see how my back is arched. Um, so that's why people who complain about this one generally won't complain about that one. So, um, but I got some, I kind of got some weight on this, and I'm going forward and flexing my quads, and I feel that same stretch up the back. Now, for some of you pregnant women, um, it's going to be very hard, or I shouldn't say it's going to be good. Some of you aren't going to feel much of a stretch because your hips are so um, loose, your ligaments are so loose from your relaxing getting kicked in when you uh, gave birth that those ligaments just allow your, your femurs and your hip bones to rotate around each other without having to stretch the muscles. So for you folks, I just want to give you one stretch that I sometimes do myself. Um, you can get at those hamstrings doing this, ideally, and again, if your hips are um, really, really loose, or your ligaments are, you might have to investigate around a little bit. Um, sometimes you, if you sit up on a pillow and get that back nice and arched, you can get these a little easier. But what I'd like to have you do here is, if you're having trouble feeling those stretches, if you feel them, then just do those stretches. But if not, get in this position, get it stretched out as you can, and then reach under your, reach underneath your legs with both your hands. Sometimes you can do, you can kind of do this. I'm strong enough to just do one hand, but, um, but reach under there, and these will be like, you know, uh, let's see, violin strings. I don't play the violin, but you'll feel where it's tight, and you can manually do, basically, you can kind of rake across, um, Again, you're trying to work with it like it's clay, um, but you can do that. You can flex your quad, do that a little bit, and you'll feel those hamstrings let go a little bit. Hopefully, most of you won't need to do this because it's a little tricky, but I'm basically grabbing that muscle and pulling on it while I flex my quad and make it move. I'm basically doing a, a kind of a press hold move with a press pull release at the same time, I'm kind of while I flex. While I flex, I'm grabbing that tight stuff and letting it go. Um, but again, hopefully most of you, most of you, either this will work, you got to feel it all up here, or this will work. Um, again, you got to feel it here. If it doesn't, then you might have to, you know, I mean, if you're talented enough, you can, you can try and do some of these. You can try and get that. That's basically what I'm doing underneath when I'm lying, sitting on the floor, just grabbing that tight stuff. And actually, thank you. You guys just, uh, you guys just helped me discover, I think, I think this is easier than doing it on the floor. I've never actually done it um, standing up like this. And then you can kind of go into that stretch as best you can. But again, you want to feel it here. So, um, so, that's video four or five, um, and hopefully you're already noticing some improvement in your uh, pubic bone pain. But um, in video five, I'm going to show you how to basically release your groins and dig in your pelvic floor just a little bit. And by then we will have gone basically around your whole pelvis, and hopefully you've noticed where you were really tight, you've noticed what's released, you've noticed what you need to go back to. Uh, but I'll cover all that uh, at the end of the next video. So thank you for your time, and I will see you at video 5.